everyone, welcome to God's Plan, Your Part, Year 2, where this year we're reading through and studying the entire New Testament one chapter at a time. Thanks again for joining us in discovering God's plan and your part in it. Hey everyone, welcome to God's Plan, Your Part. Today we are in the 11th chapter of Matthew. We'll be talking a little bit about some of the expectations of Jesus as the coming Messiah, or I guess the, uh, the arrival of the Messiah. We'll talk about... Um, a little bit of what Jesus is offering to those who work well um, and what he offers to those who are willing to work for the kingdom. So before we get into the episode today, I do want to remind you, if you have not already checked it out or you have uh, little kiddos that live at your house or people that you know that have kids that may appreciate um, a podcast for kids about the Bible, uh, we have our God's Plan, Your Part for Kids that we launched two weeks ago. There are two episodes. They come out each Friday discussing a different biblical character and how God used them in his plan and how also God uses even children um, in his uh, amazing plan, what their part can be and how we can kind of talk through and discuss that with our own kids in this podcast that we started the beginning of this year. So if you're interested in that, make sure you step on over there and uh, take a listen to our first two episodes. They're quite entertaining, uh, but also have really good nuggets of knowledge and wisdom for children as they are exploring God's word as well. So back to today's episode. This is actually a semi-short chapter. There are only 30 verses, uh, but the first section of the chapter talks about these messengers that come from John the Baptist. So John the Baptist has been imprisoned, and I actually really misunderstood this part of the story in the past. So typically, when the this, when John's disciples are coming to ask Jesus, like, hey, are you really the one that was supposed to come? Um, it always confused me, like, why is John asking this? Like, He was just out in the wilderness not too long ago, acting like a crazy person, talking about how this Messiah was going to come. You better prepare yourself for it, baptizing people, baptizing Jesus himself. And now he's questioning if Jesus was the one that was to come or not. And what's interesting about this is John had really or has really good motives and expectations of who the Messiah is. He's like spot on. However... In his humanity, he also is kind of falling into what like the traditional Jewish people of the time would have thought too. Like, here comes this guy. Is he actually the Messiah? Because he's not looking like this great warlord that is a like an official king that's going to come through and just like wipe out all of the unjust and unrighteous people and judge them and take care of all of those who are righteous. So to me, it was like, Okay, so John had his questions too, simply because he was suffering and and basically Jesus sends him back um, or sends the disciples back and says like, hey, I came to make sure that the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, deaf hear, the dead are raised up, the poor hear the good news um, that is preached to them. So it was really interesting to hear this dialogue again, but take a different perspective of it. I think John is actually having like a significant faith crisis. Yeah. Uh, when you think about John, and actually Jesus refers to him this way, he is not a reed shaken by the wind. It's kind of an odd um, figure of speech that we wouldn't use anymore. But if you imagine a reed shaken by the wind, it's just like flopping back and forth any different way. Like John is not known to be that. John is like this firm, direct, uh, fiery prophet. He's the last Old Testament prophet, actually. Um, and he is having this faith crisis because he's now in prison and he's wondering, okay, is Jesus actually who he says he is? Which is interesting um, because if you remember back when we covered, uh, probably last year, when we covered what happened to John and his family, like it's no small thing that John the Baptist was born. He, he was born miraculously. There were angels that announced that he was coming. Um, it should not shock him <laughs> that he's involved in something important. But here he is going through significant hardship. He's imprisoned because he confronted Herod about Herod's own sin. And he's like, oh, man, like, I wonder if I wasted my life. And so I think John the Baptist can actually be an example for us. Um, in that he started to experience hard things. He had a faith crisis that caused him to question uh, what he understood to be true. So he sent people to Jesus to have Jesus affirm for him what is true. And I get the idea that when they returned and said, yeah, Jesus is doing all the things the Messiah is supposed to do. He's like, oh, 
I am affirmed. I will continue mm-hmm. to believe because we don't we don't know John the Baptist as somebody who turned from his faith. He actually seems to have persisted and endured um, quite admirably. Well, and then we move into the next section. It's the same section, but it's like the tail end of it where John, or excuse me, not John, Jesus shifts his focus then to the, he says, what shall I compare this generation? But really what he's doing is he's kind of talking about like the Pharisees, the Uh teachers of the law, those people who are really questioning him. And he says, hey, like, you guys are like the children sitting in the marketplace saying, hey, I did this for you, but you didn't dance. I Mm -hmm. sang this for you. You didn't mourn. Um, It's basically like saying like, We had really high expectations, and here comes Jesus, here comes John, both fulfilling some crazy um, prophecies that have been spoken about. Jesus, obviously, way more about him, but they are here, they're preparing the way for this message, or God's message, and still people are rejecting them. So it's interesting, like, John has this focus, he gets a little shy away from it, and then he comes back, and then Jesus is just like, but the rest of you... You like we're right here in front of you and you still are rejecting it. There is a significant message here for us today because what Jesus is saying is, okay, John the Baptist came as God's messenger. You didn't like him because he dressed funny and was too direct. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus came as God's literal son. You didn't like him because he dresses fancy or (laughs) no, (laughs) it's they're talking about. John came neither eating or drinking, and they said he has a demon. Jesus came yeah. eating and drinking, and they say, look at him. He's a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of all tax right. collectors So we won't say that he dressed fancy. No, that was, not at all. That was uh, exaggerating. But he's eating and drinking, which is what John is not doing. Mm-hmm. And it, it's like, hey, there was this version of God reaching out to you that was like wildly conservative. He literally will lives in the desert. Uh, he's just speaking repentance all the time. Now there's this other version that is like, what appears to be wildly liberal in some ways, like he's out here with tax collectors, he's out here with sinners, and no matter what, you don't like it. And so what's interesting is they're both preaching that the kingdom of heaven is coming. They're both preaching that repentance is necessary. They're doing it in different ways, but with the same message. And still it's like, well, I don't really like what you're doing. If you do it this way, I might listen, but I'm not going to. (laughs) And I think the message for us today is there are so many people Um, And I see this firsthand. There are so many people that are looking for their favored version of Christianity, and they just never seem to find it. They just never seem to find it. And what it is, is they're refusing to come under the authority of Christ. And they're not experiencing some new phenomenon. This has existed forever. Well, if Jesus would just do this, I might be into him. Or if Jesus would do this, I might be into him. No, you're just refusing to come under the authority of Christ to submit to him and obey his commandments. They were doing that then. We're doing that today. The solution is to obey Christ and do what he says. So then we get to the end of the chapter, and this is what I was referring to at the beginning of the episode. We were talking about rest. And Ryan, this section really resonated with you. I think I just really love this passage. Every time I read it, it kind of like gets me out of nowhere. Like, man, I just love Jesus. Like, I just love what he's saying. (laughs) Because... So here's what he says. This is verse um, 28. It's a very familiar passage. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. A couple things I want to touch on here. Um, First, yokes. like A yoke is like this giant wooden beam that is meant to tie animals together, mostly oxen, sometimes horses or something. But if you look at a yoke, it is giant, it is massive, it is oppressive. It looks heavy, which is what Jesus is like Mm -hmm. invoking that imagery. But it's meant to tie animals together to make the work easier. So Jesus is using this like burdensome looking thing to teach the people that actually, I'm going to do this with you. You will not do it alone. I will be with you. And when I do the work with you, the work will be light, not heavy. So Mm -hmm. the Pharisees are out, like the religious leaders of the day are out telling people like, you need to live your life in a way that is oppressive and difficult. And Jesus is saying, no, this isn't oppressive and difficult. Even though Jesus is saying difficult things, heavy things, like living a life that is honoring Christ, like picking up your cross and carrying it daily, Mm -hmm. that's a difficult thing. But the difference is that Jesus is going to do it 
with you. And this promise has not expired. It's not like Jesus Mm -hmm. promised that to the immediate disciples and then he left. We can honor Christ. We can live a life worthy of Christ together with Christ. And we will not experience the burden that people try to say. Like people try to say like, oh, I could never be a Christian. That just, oh, that's so hard. Like I could never live that way. It's like, well, you can with Christ in you like helping you, leading you, directing you, taking on your burden. So the final thing that Jesus promises is when you do this, when you come under his yoke, he will give you rest. Like Mm -hmm. the, the burden is light. You will find rest, not only like physical rest, but rest for your soul. Listen to me. If you are experiencing like anxiety, uh, frustration, just like unrest in yourself, you need rest Mm -hmm. for your soul. And the only place you get rest for your soul is Jesus. Like Jesus, you need to follow Jesus. And I know a lot of you listening, you're already following Jesus, but don't discount what I'm saying because we need a constant reminder to follow Jesus, to endure the race set before us. Uh, and to, to not give in to temptation, to not fall behind, but take on the yoke of Jesus. There's another thing here that's kind of subtle, is that a lot of times the the really popular Jewish rabbis at the time would say, hey, take on my yoke, which meant to become their student. Mm. So Jesus is saying, like, become one of my followers, become one of my students, and I will teach you how to live a life that honors God. So it's interesting to me that chapter 11 starts with, John the Baptist's crisis of faith. Is Jesus really who he says he is? And chapter 11 ends with Jesus saying, I am in fact who I say I am. And if you take on my yoke, the burden is easy, the yoke is light, and you will find rest for your soul. So the your part is pretty simple and pretty direct, and I do think it applies to everyone. If you're hearing me and you're like a seasoned believer, please don't discount me and think like, oh, that's for new believers. Like we need to constantly come under the yoke of Jesus, obey his commandments, trust his promises, and know that he is doing the work with us. So we don't have to get wore out. Uh, We don't have to be exhausted living the life that Christ has called us to live because there's no question uh, that he has called us to live a very different life. It causes us to stick out at times. It causes us to be um, insulted at times. It causes friction in our lives at times. But when we are yoked together with Jesus, just have that vision in your mind of like these two animals tied together, committing the work together, finishing the work together. That is the life that Christ has for you. So whether you're a new believer uh, or a seasoned, it feels weird to say old believer, a seasoned (laughs) believer, uh, know that your hope is in Christ, that he is promising to do the work with you and you will find rest for your soul. My goodness, I love this verse because... I just love having rest for my soul. And you know when you have it and you know when you don't. Mm -hmm. Um, So I just encourage you to pray about that. Uh, If you would like us to pray for you about that, send us an email. We would love to spend some time uh, praying together with you that you would find rest for your soul in Christ. We'll be back again tomorrow. We'll see you then. Thanks for joining today's episode of God's Plan, Your Part. As always, please consider partnering with us as we are a listener-supported podcast that we hope to continue to grow with support from listeners just like you. We've made it super easy to partner with us, and you can support us by following the link in our show notes or our description. You can support us with as little as $3 a month. Every little bit of this helps so much, and we're so thankful for your support. With that in mind, here's today's reading. Matthew chapter 11. When Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in their cities. Now when John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? And Jesus answered him, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, Lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news to preach to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. What then did you come out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. 
Truly I say to you, among those born of women there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their playmates. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. Then he began to denounce the cities where most of his mighty works had been done, because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you that it will be more tolerable on that day of judgment for the land of Sodom than for you. At that time Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of God's Plan, Your Part. Don't forget, you can find us on just about every social media platform and YouTube. Let us know what you thought of today's episode, and if you have any questions, go ahead and post them there. You can also reach out to us directly at godsplanyourpart at gmail.com. As always, if you don't have a Bible, or if you'd like to use the one that we use, uh, reach out to us via email, and we'll be happy to send one to you. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you.